Hello, welcome back to Emoji Economics YouTube channel. Um, this is our fifth video in this course, um, Research Writing. So today's topic is plagiarism and referencing. Now, this might not be the first time you are hearing the word plagiarism. So what does plagiarism really mean? So um, why is it a serious concern in academia? Uh, for example, you could be given an assignment and in the assignment you would uh, be given an instruction that only 15% plagiarism is allowed um, and maybe critically only 5% plagiarism is allowed. I could have ranges, you could have percentages, 25% plagiarism, 30% plagiarism, and what have you. So what does plagiarism really mean? What does it entail? Now, plagiarism is really about stealing someone else's work, someone else's idea, without recognizing the effort that those people are putting into it. Now, if I should do something and then you're coming to take my idea and assume it is your own, without recognizing me, without referencing me, then that means you are plagiarized. And, you know, it's a serious concern because it's, it's that amount of stealing. So you are stealing someone's intellectual property without you know recognizing um that uh, person so um, in academia it's not as if uh, people are not permitted to take the work of someone else you know and make use of it while developing their own work uh, because there are sometimes you know maybe you want to do an assignment there are sometimes of uh, usually you have to google and um, google brings some articles for you or some sources for you maybe books you know um, journals, maybe articles or what have you, and Google brings those things and from there you can get information regarding the topic that you are researching on and whatever. Okay, now plagiarism is going to exist when you take all of those things and you do not reference the writers or the researchers engaged in putting the article together, so that means you've stolen their idea, right? So that's plagiarism. So the thing is that in um, academic writing or in any kind of research work, you are more or less building on what someone else has what someone else has done. But well, you have to uh, give the person the recognition that the person deserves. You know, if I write a work or if I do something, and then you come to take a part of it, you know, in in developing what whatever it is that you are into. Now it's a glory to me, right, that you are coming to take something that I did and you are making use of it. But if you fail to um, recognize me, all right, so that is where the problem is. So I'm not saying don't take my work, I'm saying uh, my work is as long as I've made that work um, available, maybe public or maybe restricted to a particular kind of people, a category of people or entity, and you can go and take that my work, right? So in as much as I made it publicly av 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 um, available in one form or the other, you can make use of it. All right, but make sure that you recognize me. Make sure that you mention that I am the one that did it. All right. Um. Uh. uh um, what do you call them? Uh, researchers. Um. Your supervisors, your lecturers, and what have you. They put in a lot of work. You know, and sometimes money in the journals that they publish. Right. So you know, in writing the uh, the journals, they conduct one or two research. You know, the efforts that goes into these things. So they now develop it and maybe pay. For their journal to be accepted in a particular maybe uh, for their writing or their research work to be accepted in a particular journal and you just take out of the work and just phew, you use it or use a part of it and you don't recognize them right so that's not good that's not good so that is something that uh, in academia is seriously frowned at all right so you don't steal you take someone's work and then you recognize uh, the person uh, but uh in your writing you have to ensure originality that is you can take some of uh people you can take um the work of one or two persons but make sure that your own ideas are made job all right in whatever writing that you are doing so that is the uh, that is why you have only 15 percent plagiarism that is it's five percent of that work must be uh, your own original ideas must come from your own originality and that is the essence of learning right so you've been taught something how well do you understand it and how well can you build on that which you have been taught okay it's not like you're going to take someone's work then you take the whole of it and then dump it and claim that you did it so that is going to be 100 percent plagiarism or maybe you take quite a number of different people's work put them together you didn't really add much and then at the end of the day you have like 80 percent plagiarism so that's not originality that's one of assembling you're assembling different people's work and putting them together to make something what we are trying to say here is that whenever you are engaged because this is research writing project writing whenever you're engaged in project writing and what have you your ideas must dominate 
your write-up right so even if it's an assignment if you have seen this video before uh, the level before the period where you're gonna be writing uh, your research I think it's it's just really good for you because when you're uh, writing your assignment you know there are some assignment that well, let me see your time papers so when you're writing your time papers you know you have to understand that what is required of you is your originality you can take from other people that's why plagiarism is not gonna be zero because usually you have to build on other people's work so there are things that you don't even understand so let's say industrialization and globalization okay you have to recite you have to like read something maybe a book or something so at least understand what does this thing really mean so in as much as you are consulting books or you are consulting the internet to make you understand what globalization entails okay a different aspect of it so that means you know your work cannot be um plagiarism free entirely because you are building on someone else's work but now how do you avoid how do you ensure that uh, your plagiarism count is low. Now, there is a way I write. You know, there are different what they call them. There are different applications that check plagiarism. But I don't care, right, about them. Now, and that's because there is a way I write that makes me confident that no matter the plagiarism app that you use, the uh, level of plagiarism of my write-up is gonna be minimal, right? And since I've been writing ten papers, you know, I write them commercially, like for different people. There are people studying. You know, they get they get to have a lot of assignments. There are some that they can't do on their own. And they pass up to me to do for them you know, at an affordable fee, so I do that. And for one or, or, or for a, or one reason or the other, you, know, you get to do some of these things. And there are some assignments or some project that people don't even understand what they're supposed to do. Now that happened to me when I was in my third year, and we had a group assignment on econometrics. I didn't even understand the question. And by the time my group, I think my group outsourced it, or maybe just I think I saw it one way or the other. Or maybe it was other groups that went to look for. Um, a student or student in statistics department to help them out and uh, I saw my group submission I didn't even understand the answer either all right but that's not a good example though because there's no learning that happened there I didn't understand the question I didn't understand the answer we just did it for the grade right let's get it good and get out and you may have experienced one thing or the other like that when you get to have an assignment that you don't even know what you're supposed to do and by the time your group eventually does something about it you look at it and you still you are still as dumb as when you I didn't even know the brother assignment at all. So things like that happen. And in such cases, you have to look for someone that is versatile in that area to help you out. All right, so that is why that's one of the reasons that people you know, outsource their 10 papers or whatever, some of it, okay, or require assistance in one way or the other. Now that you outsource completely, maybe you've done some part, you're stuck, and you need someone to like build or motivate it is that, you're do that you've done and so on and so forth. Okay, so why did I even talk about that? I forgot it. But what I'm trying to uh, say is that, that let's 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 define our plagiarism. Plagiarism is the assumption and usage of other people's work, efforts, and ideas without recognizing the original owners or creators. All right, so that's essentially it. So you are taking. I've explained it earlier. You are taking someone's work. You are taking someone's definition of something. You are taking the findings of someone's research, and you are the way you the way you the way you are expressing it is as if you where the, the stuff came from you originally so that's that's not cool okay so and um there are ways to avoid that okay i remember i was saying that the way i write i'm confident enough that i don't know whether it is turn it in or turn it out whatever the app is and several other apps that i used to check plagiarism you know plagiarism checkers i'm just quite confident that okay um whatever it is i'm gonna write is going to be plagiarism free to a reasonable extent and I think I used to boast between 5 to 15 percent. I had written one book like that, and you know, when the owner checked it, it was maybe it was around five percent, you know, plagiarism. It was the owner that checked it, I didn't check it, I just wrote the way I understood. Now, when you're writing your research, one thing that you should know is that your research is just like an exam, right? It's just like normal exams that you write. Now, look at it, you've studied a lot of, a lot of materials, the one that your lecturer gave you, maybe one or two YouTube videos, like the one you're seeing now, okay, on a particular concept, a particular idea done your own research you went into the library you read some stuffs you went online you read some things you know all of those and then by the time it's your exam by the time it, uh, it's your exam period and you see a question on you know that you've read differently about you realize that you begin to write you begin to write stuffs as all except your village people are probably following you or maybe something happened and you couldn't record the things that you read you know in one way or the other but if it was something that you read a lot a lot about you realize that you get you begin to put these ideas together 
and then it continues to write and the writing continues to flow and that is exactly what we want in project writing so when you're writing your project that is exactly that you want the only difference now is that instead of your exam where you keep on writing and writing without referencing anybody okay in your projects in your project the ideas that you're writing about you know that you've read about in different ways that you're not putting now in your own words have to be referenced okay you have to uh, put a reference that you have to refer to the source, okay, to the researcher, to the person, to the um, article, to the website, or whatever that you that you uh, must have derived those ideas from. So that's what's the difference. So see your project writing as an examination, like a glorified examination, right? And here, difference being that uh, the textbook you read for your exam or the textbooks you read for your exam, and you wrote from them, all right, have to be, you know, the authors have to be cited in your research work. So that's it. Okay, yeah, that's that's it. So how do you avoid plagiarism? How do you minimize your plagiarism? How do you become confident? And no matter what software someone is going to develop somewhere, uh, the plagiarism checker is not going to really have a hold on you. So how do you ensure that that is the case? Now, number one, I wrote steps in avoiding plagiarism. Okay. Um, read to understand. So that's one thing. Read to understand. So if I give you um, a page of a document, no, remember the things I used to do um, when you were younger, right? And um, comprehension passages. When you were reading comprehension passages, like that, that should be primary school. I don't know which country you are. I are reading this from, but in my country, Nigeria, I think those are primary schools. They do the comprehension passage in secondary school. Yeah, I think so. In our secondary schools, you know, all of those parts. You read. A, you read. Um, a passage, right? The book is no longer there, and you have to summarize the, what you've read. Okay, so whatever it is that you are going to summarize um, is going to come from your understanding of the passage that you've read. So that's basically it. So when you have papers, when you have journals, and um, you are that you're using to, you know, put up your research work together, so what you just have to do is read the old damn thing, or if it's where well, maybe a paragraph or two paragraphs, read the old thing. So what have you understood from what you? What you've read so write those things down in your own words now what you're gonna realize is that when two or three people read a particular paper haven't you observed it and when you and your friend maybe people that they group uh, what they call it um maybe group study okay group study or whatever it is so by the time you guys have to replicate the things that you've learned now let's assume that we talked about the same thing or let me say you and two of your classmates are watching this video right now okay then uh, you're done shut down youtube or whatever then you go offline and you want to summarize everything i've taught you in this class by the time you write whatever by the time you write your summary and compare your summary to your friend's summary you are going to see if you guys have written it well, you are going to see that the theme of your writing is the same and when i say the theme like the major thing i discuss in this video is going to whatever you've written is going to revolve around that but check your words check your structure Check your sentences, they are not going to be the same. They are not. Because your own thought process is not the same thing as your friend's thought process. Uh, your, the, uh, your, how do I call it now? Is it the level or amount of vocabulary that you can express yourself in? It's not going to be the same with those of your friends, right? So the way you express yourself, your writing style, right? It's not going to be the same. It's likely not going to be the same as that of your friend. And even if your writing style were the same thing, your choice of words are not going to be the same thing. All right, so that is what the project is about. So you read something, you know, you understand, you digest it, you understand it, and then you are trying to replicate it in your own words. So if you are doing that, how are you going to have a hundred percent plagiarism? How are you going to have? Why won't you have, you know, a plagiarism um, um, amount or level that is low? Why? Now check your friends. Maybe she does after this video, like just assess something. You and your friend. Bring up or let you and your friends summarize what you've learned in this class and then read out what you guys have. Now, you, one thing that you're going to figure out is the choice of words. The way you began is not going to be the same thing. Your number of paragraphs is not going to be the same thing. Your number of sentences is not going to be the same thing. Your number of words will likely not be, not, will likely not be the same thing, except you restrict yourselves to maybe uh, 200 words. You can say, okay, let's summarize this whole thing in just 200 words, except you do that. Um, would you or uh, would you likely have you know 200 words? One could have 199, one could have 201, one could have 198, and there's nothing that else you want to write again, you know, something like that. By the time you read the two of them, you realize that they are not the same thing. So that is how you should write your project, right? So read the whole thing, the sources, the different sources, and then after all of that, what have you understood? Put them down. But once you are taking an idea from somebody, part of what you're writing, you remember, okay, I read this from 
uh, this particular journal from this particular paper from this particular source so you reference that source and put there so referencing there's no way you talk about plagiarizing that you talk about referencing so referencing is not you referencing a sentence the way it was where you read it you're not cramming right so reference is all about you know citing the source of an idea so what you are writing about is an idea where did you get this idea from not where did you get this set of words from or where did you get this set of sentences from where did you get the ideas from so that is what you are supposed to reference okay now um, the rules i said you need to understand one and number two you write in your own words right now number three avoid changing the voice of sentences only now i don't really know if this is how i'm supposed to put this but what i'm trying to say is that you know, there are two type of is it voice or voices now of sentences uh, if i'm wrong please correct me nobody knows everything all right we have active voice and passive voice so for active voice it begins with the subject right the predicates or what you call the verb and the object of the sentence so you have something like svo right now what some students do is that by the time they see a sentence okay that they want to write about they then change the voice of it so what i've said now you know that's active voice sentence um subject verb and object so they rephrase the sentence and by the time they do that they would not have object verb and subject so yeah what they just essentially did is okay subjects began the active voice they take it to the back and make objects become now let me let me show you an example in case you've forgotten what active voice and passive uh, voice is uh, example Mitchell for me let's assume that um, you maybe you came across a journal or stuff like that and we are talking about accidents in Africa as a result of Dangote uh, cement trucks so in one of your sources let's say maybe a journal or so you saw a particular piece of information that you want to you know pick and add to your work okay the author michel Folajimi. now when you see names like this the first name is the author's name and the second name is the surname all right and when you're referencing you start with the surname okay so now there are two types of uh reference uh, references uh, what i and what i mean is you have in-text referencing in-text that is inside your text in text inside your text in text reference now this is and after this uh, reference the one that's you know the reference inside your right write up and then you have the i don't know if it is out text or whatever it is that is called now that's your list of references at the end of your final work right so now this in text reference is divided into two so there is the one there is a way you reference if you are just beginning a sentence or a, maybe a paragraph or something like that and there's a way you reference at the end of a sentence or maybe a paragraph or maybe a quote right so now this is the original idea in 2020 okay in 2020 dangote cement trucks caused 1025 accidents across africa okay that is it now if you look at it dangote cement trucks that's the subject that's taking you back to your english classes i hope you remember the performance of an action in a sentence uh, dangote cement trucks is the subject then cost is the verb or predicate or whatever it's called then once real to five accidents happens to be the object so this is active voice so active voice as subject it's it's in that order svo okay now some 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 of you might or some people or some students might say okay they want to pick this right then they change to passive voice which is what we have here so you have 1025 accidents were caused by dangote cement truck so 1025 accidents 1025 accident now happens to be the object okay because that is what is being caused where caused is a verb phrase then uh, by dangote cement trucks so dangote cement trucks is the subject so here you have ovs so this is active voice then this other one is passive voice so now here the reference because i'm referencing uh for Jimmy at the end of this particular text so you have after i've written everything here so for Jimmy 2020 so when you are referencing at the end of a sentence you create two brackets right for Jimmy, comma 2020 if the author is one okay so there's a difference when you have two authors there's a difference when you have three authors we are going to talk about that um, later on now when you do something like this this is actually childish you are going to be flagged your writer is going to be flagged for plagiarism okay what you're supposed to do um is that there's a way you you've read this you've understood it so rephrase it in your own words if you can change the whole word entirely you should do that now i i, I wrote something here 
So according to Fola Jimmy, now because I am starting with I'm starting the sentence, right? According to Fola Jimmy, so the reference name is different. I write Fola Jimmy, which is the surname, Fola Jimmy, then into bracket 2021, right? Comma. So that's different from what I have here, which was referencing it's the in text reference that is within my body of work, but at the end of the sentence that I just referenced. Okay, <clears throat> but here the referencing comes at the beginning, the reference comes at the beginning. So according to Fuller Jimmy 2021, I can put it that way and say Africa witnessed one zero two accident as a result of whatever. Now the other way I could also state this is um Fuller Jimmy 2021 reported that Africa witnessed you understand so these are two different ways. It's not actually what you are going to write is according to Fuller Jimmy or Fuller Jimmy 2021 reported. No, that's not what you are going to write. So I'm just using that as an example. And you could start in whatever way that you also want as long as the original um theme original team of um the idea is not lost as long as the original idea is not lost okay so what i want to say is that way cement cause considerable amount of accidents in africa in a particular year right so that is the idea so now how have i phrased it africa witnessed 1025 accidents as a result of the presence and operation of navigate cement trucks on african roads in 2020 alone now look at this and look at this i have you know understood this and I have digested it in my own way. Okay, so this is different. So flagging this off um, um, as a plagiarism or whatever is likely not going to happen, or it's going to be low. It's going to be less compared to here, where you just you you more or less rearrange the words. All right. So plagiarism is all about avoiding plagiarism. is all about you. You know, I talked about it. You reading to understand and you writing in your own words. So after you've understood. The right, you know, in your own words, and I'm talking about avoid changing the voices of sentences, you know, from passive. No, avoid changing the voice of the voice of sentences only. Okay. Now, I believe with this kind of example, you've been able to um, understand what I've been trying to talk about um, concerning plagiarism. Now, here, when I rephrased in my own words, um, the idea add more numbers. Like, let me try to express the idea. Add more num add more words, right? than the original uh, way that Mitchell stated the work. But that's not a big deal. So you might, it might be the other way around, where your own rephrasing of the original idea might have lesser amount of words. Now, now why I'm trying to explain this kind of thing this way, you might think it's you know, childish, I'm not supposed to say that, but students often have, you know, funny questions sometimes. There are topics I skip, but there are things I skip and I think, okay, students don't have problems with that. And at the end of the day, they come back and ask, okay, what about something like this? So let me just say everything now, okay, just in case. And I'm going to give you an example. Okay? But before we get that, make the structure, number four, make the structure of your writing unique from the source you are copying from. Yeah, I've mentioned that before. So here, I'm just looking at the sentence. So it, it could be a whole page, okay? Now let's say Mitchell's writing was a whole page. Now after reading this, to understand, like I said at the beginning of the class, you know, reading different articles, different sources, <clears throat> For you to write your exam or your test or your assignment so after reading maybe a op then the phrase you know put it in a different structure right so if this person came from a to b to c could be just maybe from a b might be from another source right before you go to c you know if i just just make sure that there's a flow at the end of the day right so let the structure vary you understand so that's just just make just be free right you no know, when i began project writing like when i began to understand project writing I now understood why um, I scored low on expression when I was in secondary school. And what I mean expression is when you write an essay, it gets marked for your mechanical accuracy. I think the use of your, um, um, what do you call these things, your commas, your full stop, your whatever. Okay, you get marked for your expression, you get marked for your introduction, your conclusion, and whatever. I used to score on expression and I, and I realized now that it was because I was holding myself back Right, I was thinking maybe this is not official enough, this is not this enough, this is not that enough. But express yourself, right? Just make sure that um, you're writing correctly, number one, and ensure that you're flowing. There is a flow. Okay, you don't say that a river is flowing from, you know, the floor to the top of a hill. It's coming from, you know, water flows from the top of a hill, you know, and flows downwards, right? So, let there be a flow. Okay, express yourself, like, feel free, but don't use... Um, you know, just don't use gutter languages or something like that. And if there is a need to use those things, you put them in quotes, put your words in italics, and make sure that they are not many, right? So don't let them, you know, be uh, all, all over the place in your writing. Okay, then uh, six, 
So recognize the owner of the idea you used. I've used that as an example. So Mitchell was, you got this idea from Mitchell's write-up somewhere and you recognized Mitchell. But after recognizing that, I mean for Jimmy, after recognizing for Jimmy, what you did here is it right? Just saying from active voice to passive voice, that's not enough. Okay, then in as much as you can, avoid quotes except be necessary. Now, because the implication of that is that the more quotes you have, you now because quotes, you have to pick quotes the exact way the person who quoted them, the person who made the quotes, you no, know, made them. So you have to put them that way. Now, if you have several quotes, then that is going to be added to your plagiarism count. All right, so just make sure that except it is necessary, avoid you no know, using quotes. It's better to paraphrase than to you know pick someone's quote and you know you might want to demonstrate that you can you want to you want to say what somebody said exactly but that may not help you right that may not help you so accept where necessary and please don't make sure it is all over the place as well because the plagiarism count is getting higher number seven don't make assertions without references you know i was going through someone's work from a particular university and you know <laughs> the person was just making an assertion what do i mean you're speaking like an authority if, for example, I say something like, it is a well-known fact that there are 200 million people in Nigeria, then I continue to write, but I continue to, you understand? So, what do I mean? Did I conduct the census, the population census, like, how, what did I come up with, like, how did I do that? I'm sure, and I'm putting it in writing, and Nigeria has 200 million people. So, that's, that's, that's not cool. Or let's say, um, there are 315 785 house owners in Nigeria. Then I continue. In fact, you may have gotten that information from a particular writer from a particular journal. Right? Are you just writing down and continuing? That's that's not, that's not cool. You're not meant to leave it like that. So what you're supposed to do is that you look for a reputable uh, source. For example, World Bank. Okay, what did World Bank say about the population of uh, Nigeria? Because World Bank is reputable when it comes to talk about data. Okay, you can talk about maybe National Bureau of Statistics, NBS. You know, look for reputable organizations that are into data collection, you know, and so on and so forth. So you have to reference them. For example, um, it is uh, uh, the population of Nigeria is about 200 million. So I can put in bracket NBS. Okay, National Bureau of Statistics 2020. All right, maybe 2019. Maybe as of 2019, the population of Nigeria was this. So you understand? So don't make assumptions. Don't just. Um, um, there are 15 million internally displaced persons in Nigeria. Like, and then you continue. <laughs> Wait, did you count them? All right, so just make sure that you don't make assertions without, you know, uh, making references. So when you make strong statement like that, please look for one or two organizations that have said something like that, okay, or that said that and reference them. So those are good ways to write your, um, um, to write your project or whatever write up you are, you are doing. Now, I said I was going to give you another example of, you know, um, how to paraphrase, how to express an idea in a different way, but you still maintaining what the idea is all about. All right, for your second example, um, so here is the original idea written by Apostle Paul on the, on the 18th of September 2010. Now, Apostle being the name of this person and Paul being the surname, okay? So, Apostle is the name of the person and Paul is the uh, surname of the person. So, when we are referencing, of course, we have to use Paul, right? So, you have Timothy, you are still young. But let nobody think that they know better than you because of that. Be an example to the people. That is the idea. Alright, and you want to take that and use it in your own work, in your own writer. So, let's read again. Timothy, you are still young. But let nobody think that they know better than you because of that. Be an example to the people, so that's it. Now, there is Daniel Abuye, um, that you know published a work in 2013 and made reference to this. So, what did he write based on um, this original idea? So, how did Daniel express himself? Okay, so according to Paul 2010, don't feel intimidated because you are young, Timothy, and be exemplary to all. Simple. Now, how can you run plagiarism on? this stuff and we expect to have a higher level of plagiarism okay how can you run plagiarism check and expect to have a higher level look at you've you've rephrased the whole thing but the original idea is still there now let's go again timothy you are still young right timothy is young but let nobody think that they know better than you because of that be an example to the people so basically some people might be trying to be intimidating timothy because 
uh, he was young, right? Or because he is young. So that's the idea. So some so yeah, you've understood that. Okay, how do I express myself? You know. So according to Paul, twenty ten, you know, yeah, recognizing that you took this idea from somebody, it's not your original idea. Don't feel intimidated because you are young, Timothy, and there's empire to all. Finish. Or let's say there is Bokola, okay, that published a work in twenty fourteen and also used this idea. Now look at the way I'm referencing in my in-text referencing. Paul into brackets 2010 the year comma that's when you are at the beginning of the sentence or maybe you are in the middle of the sentence so how do you this question reference Paul at the end so how did Bukola okay express herself okay Timothy you are encouraged is there encouraged here okay you are encouraged not to feel intimidated by those older than you and ensure you are a good example to others okay so here Timothy you are still young Timothy you are encouraged not to can you see? Feel intimidated. You are still young, but let nobody think that they know. You are encouraged not to feel intimidated by those other than you, or you can say by those other than you are, and ensure you are a good example to others. Paul, uh, comma, 2010. So that's it. Okay, I hope you've understood this particular video. So by the time you have, you are doing your write up, please and please take note of these things. Now, I'm not asking you to start to paraphrase sentence by sentence paragraph by, uh, sentence by sentence you know it's not like that just follow what i said you should do earlier read a whole thing all right um that revolves around an idea that you want read it digest it understand it and then put it back in your own words then reference the author or the authors right so i'm going to give you an assignment based on this particular class and that assignment would be that i'll send you a document okay for those registered with us on the school of economics i'll send you a document which you are supposed to read and summarize for me Okay, so it might be from one or two or three authors, all right, around a central idea. Okay, maybe economic growth and inflation I've been talking about. So maybe just any like three stops. And I ask you, okay, read the introduction of this person, this person, this person. So the three of them write something nice based on the introduction that they have. That you can, of course, add your own and express yourself. Okay, but I want to see how you are going to express some of the key ideas that you are going to take from those journals, from those papers. And that's gonna be it so if you do it well uh, good so you are you're preparing yourself and if you don't do it well then it's up to you at the end of the day your final project in your school is up to you and if you are likely gonna travel to schools in the UK for example to foreign schools well of course you mix these things again and then it might not be so easy for you to cope at that particular period of time and in fact you may actually be a foreigner that is looking at this that is, that is watching this video right now so please and please do the needful right like i said once more for our students i'll send you documents you are going to summarize for me read them bring some things out you can add your own to whatever it is you want to do but i just want to see how you are able to read all of those stuffs understand them and express yourself okay while still being while still revolving around the central idea of what you have read Alright, our next class is going to continue on referencing because uh, there are ways to reference two people. There are ways to reference more than two people. Okay, so that's what we are going to do in our next class. See you there. Thank you for watching.